Hey, it's Richard Geller for businesscreditmachine.org. I get so many notes from entrepreneurs who are work or would be entrepreneurs, and I want to share with you some of them. The hardest thing that people have, I think, to do when you're an entrepreneur is to build momentum for your business. And when you're starting out, you have no momentum. You haven't got the phone ringing. You haven't got customers calling. Everything that's going to happen is going to happen because of what you do. And if you're not feeling so good today or you don't feel like getting out of bed, nothing's going to happen at all. So you've got the toughest road to hoe right now, but you're a very special person because you're an entrepreneur. And there's very few of us on this earth. Most people want to go to a job. They want to work for someone else. They want to be told what to do. They want to be given the rules. But you and I are different. We are entrepreneurs. We're people that are looking to make our own rules. We're people that are looking to create our own lives. We're not looking to follow. We're looking to lead. That also means that sometimes it's lonely and difficult because the lot of an entrepreneur is that when there's no momentum building, it's all you, baby, and you know that. And that's a big responsibility that weighs on your shoulders. I want to commend you for your being an entrepreneur. We have to stick together, you and I. And um, to that end, I think it's very helpful is to have other people that you bounce ideas off of and that you... Um, uh, relate to and that you share things with. So I'd like you to send me an email uh, if I can help you in any way. And uh, you you could do that. Uh, get on my list. Go to businesscreditmachine.org. And uh, if you're not seeing this video on there, go to businesscreditmachine.org. Put in your name and email address and um, uh, send me an email. And you'll be on my, my fantastic list, which I guarantee you you'll really appreciate. So a couple of questions that came in that I want to answer. Uh, Richard, 2009 starting off with a bang. Suppliers from Europe called. Uh, big Russian supplier. I really need to sell some limited liability company memberships. Uh, Paul. Paul, thanks for emailing me. You want to sell some memberships, meaning you want to get some investors. Um, I would certainly take me up on this offer I have for my course, which is how to raise money without selling your soul. Because I've been around the block and raised plenty of money and helped many people raise money. And uh, it kind of covers corporate um, and strategic investments, uh, which is a really good way of doing things. Going to angel investors and venture capital. And it does it in such a way that I've never seen any course and I've never seen people discuss. And I wish I had known all this stuff when I was raising money before. So um, that's one thing I would suggest. Another thing, you know, what you might want to do uh, certainly you want to find a good lawyer to work with. And i tell you why. A good lawyer is somebody that handles a lot of securities work and does a lot of money raises for small business. And they have connections that they can set you up with. They can give you a list of investors and people that they've worked with on other deals. So that can be a very helpful source of, of people. Another source of people to invest is customers. Customers are your by far your best source of potential investors. Another one is suppliers. People that supply you are really, really good because they have strategic reasons to invest and can give you a, a sweetheart deal. Somebody that I was uh, following had a great idea they pursued and for a food product, and they were able to get a manufacturer to invest a million dollars in tooling for a whole production line and invest in the company because the manufacturer wanted to have uh, another uh, product line. And they saw this uh, this food product as a way of doing it. So that was a much easier investment to get than it would have been to go to a venture capitalist or an angel investor. So strategic investors, customers, uh, going to a lawyer, those are the things that I would suggest as, as starting points in getting my course, which really will help you. Okay, here's one more. Tim, from Tim. My scenario is probably not that different from Renee's. Um, I've done many of the things you suggested. My dilemma is this. My business has grown so fast from a concept two months ago to a monster of an undertaking. My concept is simple but has many little details that may keep it on the drawing board permanently without me getting some funding first. Tim, we got to do something about that, man. we got to simplify. You've got to you've got to come up with something that's so simple that you don't need to worry about, it. you know, it's so complicated it may never get off the drawing board. Uh, one of the most costly items is a directory website that can do all I want and need it to do. I am looking at about eleven grand just to get that up and running. 
Um, well, you know, okay. And then, and then, and then Tim says, I'm working with a web designer who's willing to do a joint venture. And this is the, the, uh, premise that I hope to employ with about five other vendors. That's good. I'm hoping after doing joint ventures with all my vendors, I have enough to make this profitable for me. Well, okay. And then he says, Paul, Tim says, I wonder if a loft is with joint venture, even though I really hate the thought of sleeping with wolves, <laughs> that I know that, that I, I, that would legally know how to take it all away from me. Well, shouldn't cost you that much to incorporate or, or set up your, your entity. Um, let me see what your concept is. My concept will employ the services of phone center, redemption center, card center for membership cards, printers, advertisers, media people for commercials. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the concept is. Uh, it's really a tough one. I know I could buy your books, but I know general knowledge type books might not lend itself to detail advice I need. Well, that's true, but uh, my courses are very helpful for you, I think, anyway. I, I don't know what to say. I, I tell you, what you need to do, I would go to be very basic about it. Try to simplify your concept. Make it so that you can get customers today or tomorrow. Make it so that you can have like a simple prototype that you can go out and get on the phone with customers. Let me tell you a story. Maybe three years ago, I had a business idea for a lead generation on the internet. And I've done a lot of things on the internet. I've been on the internet since 1994 uh, commercially. So I've had a lot of experience on the internet. And I said, I've got an idea for lead generation. You know what I did? I put together not even a, a website, really. I put together a very simple package I could fax to people. And then I made phone calls. And I called professionals, spoke to them on the phone, told them my idea. And I got a lot of them to say yes. I faxed them the information. They said yes. They signed a contract. I didn't even ask them for money up front at the beginning. And then I actually got some clients. Then I went to a web developer and partnered with a developer and we put together a real quick website that did everything that we needed to do and we launched the site. And then at some point I started to charge up front for the product. And it, because I already had references, I was able to charge up front. And I charged more and more up front and I changed my business model and it's still actually, you know, kind of going on today. So I would suggest you do the same thing. You come up with something that's so simple that you can get on the phone and you can sell. You want to peddle something. You want to prove you can get customers. And then you want to um, take those customers and go to the web developer, make a very simple deal with the developer. You don't have to make them a partner in your business. There's all kinds of partnerships you can do. You could put a cap. So you could say, I will, uh, you could bill me for your service. If I don't make any money, I don't have to pay you. But if I make money, I'll pay your bill. Plus I'll pay 20% as a, a, a compensation for your taking a risk. So this doesn't make them a real partner. They're invoicing you. So they're a vendor, but they're also getting an additional kicker. And the understanding is if you're not successful, you don't have to pay them anything. Um, you could generally find people to take deals like that, especially if you've got customers already. That's the key. I want you to go out and figure out how to get customers, not have to do all this other stuff first, but get customers. Now, what happens if you can't put the deal together and you get customers? You refund their money. Or I'd rather you see you not even take any money at first. Uh, to be honest with people, you could say this is a pre-publication offer or a um, pre-opening offer, something like that, so they know that they're very early on the bandwagon. And you'll tell people, if you're looking for something where you've got years in business and thousands of satisfied customers, this isn't for you. If you're looking for something on the ground floor with very little risk that could do very well for you, then I think you should give my, my concept a try. I don't even know what your concept is, but that's how I would approach it. I hope this has been helpful for you. This is Richard Geller. Uh, get on my list so you get my, my videos and emails. Um, businesscreditmachine.org. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon.